I'm Dr. Christina Jane Phillips. Um, I work at Leeds University Business School um, and I am a lecturer in statistics and business analytics. So human-centric analytics is the idea that um, when we develop analytics applications, we have to do it with the human end user in mind because it's people that use these applications. So when we develop the applications, we don't just want something that talks to a computer, but we want something that talks to the human beings who will be using it. And one of the ways of doing that, which seems to be quite effective, is to involve the human end users of the data, the people who make the data in the first place, in the development of the analytics. But not developing them just at the end, after we've developed something and then we give them a workshop and we say, there you are, this is what it is, but actually developing it with them from the beginning, right the way through the process. And when we do that, we find that the analytics we develop are contextualized for the user. So they speak to them, they make sense. If they do something like, for instance, demand planning, they have to look at the past history of how much has been uh, wanted by particular clients and they need to know that they can predict what that client's going to want in the future. Now they may know certain things about that client and they need the kind of data that speaks to them about that problem situation, about that client and what their needs are. And if you develop it without them, you may only give them half the information, but if you develop it with them, you're much more likely to get them the kinds of information that they need at the time that they need it with the kind of data that they need. So it's all about developing a contextualized analytics and doing that in participation with the end users. And of course, what then happens naturally as a part of that process is that that end user actually takes ownership of what you've developed and then they use it on a regular basis and in the longer term they usually end up starting to change it themselves they start using the software themselves and they even start manipulating the data themselves and they too become data analysts um, so in the longer term when you look at it over a longer period of time after developing many uh, analytics applications in this way what you start to see is a culture change the culture of the organization starts to shift and become more data orientated. So, the kind of analytics we need. Um, analytics is, is quite a, a nebulous term, which means a lot of different things to different people. But basically, it's applied statistics and something called operations research, which a lot of people haven't heard of, but is actually used throughout businesses across the world all the time. Um, one of the most known ways of using it is something called a statistical process control. A lot of people who work in quality control will actually have had some kind of um, interaction with that type of paradigm. Um, we're looking at things like, are these two things the same? Um, is that thing behaving differently today to how it behaved yesterday? Um, we want to predict things based on what happened in the past and we might want to try to get data coming in at a rate so that we can use what happened in the past and then say, well, if this is happening today, what's going to happen tomorrow? Now, that's how our weather forecasting works. So when we do forecasting, when you go to your app and you look at what the weather is going to be today, that has lots of mathematical models predicting what the weather's going to be like based on the past data, but it also has new data coming in all the time, feeding that model and making the model more precise. And that's what we generally try to do with analytics, with predictive analytics. But then we also do things like we try to look at what might happen if things change. So we will create simulation models based on how the company looks now and then say, well, if we change this, what would it look like next? And there's a lot of work on that in Industry 4 at the moment, looking at things like digital twins. And that's very much analytics type development. There's also visual analytics. Visual analytics is very important because visual analytics helps people who don't really understand the, the algorithm, the mathematical model, to understand what the mathematical model gives them. So they don't necessarily need to understand the, the maths underneath it, but they see that what it gives them is something that they understand. Now this is what happens if you do human-centric analytics because 
you have talked to people about what their pain is, what they're feeling in their daily work, and then you go away and you find the data that goes with that, and you do some manipulation with it, and you present it as it is in visual analytics, maybe you do some, some statistics on it, and you compare it like this, and then when you show that to people, they understand it because it makes sense to them, because it speaks to their problems and their domain. Now, of course, the problem with this is you do need to have good data. Now, if you're going to have good data, you also have to have a good understanding of data. And there are always three truths to data. So we have what the data is supposed to say. So that's what the data was originally, the data system was set up to collect data, and that was what was supposed to be put in that box. And then you have what people think the data should say. Now, technically, that's multiple truths. There are a lot of different people thinking different things about the data. And then, of course, there's what the data actually says. And through the process of human-centric analytics, as we actually try to create this with the frameworks that I've developed to do it, we go through a process of saying, well, what do you see? This is the data that goes with what you've told me you see. And then that data is telling me this, at which point someone will say, oh, that's not what I thought it said. <laughs> and usually that's just because the data is collected at a different time of day from when they thought it was collected. It's collected at a different aggregate. So maybe it's collected every week and not collected every day, or it's collected every hour and not collected daily. So usually it's just some sort of uh, difference in the way that they understood it was done and the way that it is actually done. And a lot of human-centric analytics process actually is about getting that alignment in those three truths of data in the first place.